Let me, uh, let me pray for us, and then we'll go ahead and get, uh, get started. Father, thank you so much for how you guide us and lead us and how you equip us. I know your word is very clear uh, that you just unload blessings and grace on everyone, even on all of your creation beyond even humans. Father, that you are, you are motivated by your love for your creation. But I also know that it's clear that uh, you are just and you are jealous and you expect glory, again, because you are motivated by love for your creation and you know what's best for us. Father, you know that for many of us, what's best for us right now is to, is to be here in this very moment, this very place, developing uh, academically and developing mentally. And Father, I pray that in all of our experiences, you would just equip us uh, to better serve you. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right. So you probably noticed as you were going through the homework for this week uh, that it was, it was just really weird. Um, and, and, and in many ways, I wanted this to be a two-part series, this whole discussion of, of angular momentum and of what that means and angular motion. Um, and so part of that, I, I wanted it to be a little bit uh, uncomfortable, but then I... I, what, what's the, undeliberately, is that a word? I undeliberately, wow, I, I don't know, I think that's a word. But I, I didn't, I made it even more difficult than it was already going to be unintentionally, but then helped to refine your algebra skills. So I didn't actually notice that until Thursday when I was sitting down and, and actually working through some of these problems that I made it inadvertently, I inadvertently made it more complex. Um, but so what I wanted to do is I wanted to go over these homework problems and show you how you would do it, remind you of how you work through using just angular velocity. And then where we can go in and say, okay, well now let's equate this. What does this mean as far as linear velocity? And then how do we more clearly uh, connect it uh, with uh, linear motion? All right, so let's take a look at these. So homework four, this, these problems are from homework four. What you'll notice um, is that basically the homework that you're going to do for today is going to go over the same problem, but it's actually going to give you the radius of the circle, and it's going to expect you to do things using linear velocity and not leave it in kind of weird units like we had last week. All right, so what is the velocity of a rock in a sling if it completes six rotations per second? So what do we have for this one? Well, this one is, is nice because when we take the time to write down what we have, we already have the answer. And I'll show you uh, what, what goes on here. So what do we have? Uh, it basically gives us our velocity. And what it tells us is that every second, this rock completes six entire circles, right? And we know so the velocity is equal to six entire circles times each circle is how many radians? Yeah. 2 pi radians per second. So it gave us the velocity, right? That's all this problem gives us. And so then when we go to tools, uh, we know that we have some tools that involve velocity, right? We've got acceleration is equal to v squared divided by r. We have things we can do now with that acceleration. Uh, and then we go here, what do we actually want? This problem is asking us, what is the velocity, right? Well, the, our given was already the velocity. All we have to do is clean this up, and we have exactly what the problem asked for. Okay. There are a couple of ways you can clean this up. You could multiply pi through, or you could leave your answer in terms of pi. It's really up to you. It gets a little weird. The more stuff you start leaving your answer in terms of, the weirder it is. So I would suggest multiplying pi out. And so when we multiply 6 times 2 times pi, we get 37.69. But now we need to think about uh, how many significant figures should we present our answer in. And the question is, can we consider this to be exactly 6 rotations? Okay. It doesn't say exactly 6, so just to be safe, it would probably be helpful to assume this is one significant figure. right? Because it might only be 5 and a half circles. 
or it might be almost six and a half circles. Okay, so if we have one significant figure, we need to present our answer in to one significant figure. So instead of 37.69, we're going to present our answer as 40. That is one significant figure radians per second. Okay. And so we left our, our answer just like that. And this was a nice one, where what you're given and what you have from the problem is exactly what the problem wants. You're actually going to find as we go through our examples preparing you for your homework, that we're going to go over the same examples we used last week, except for now we're going to reconcile and, and make our velocity something that's more normal, right? like meters per second instead of radians per second. Get some linear, uh, linear equivalent. Okay, so is this okay for number one? Okay, so now let's do number two. And two, three, and four all build off of this. So at the same time, I realized, oh my goodness, I didn't include the radius. That was unintentional, although you can still do it without it. You just have to leave radius in your answer. I realized, wow, since every problem builds off the previous one, if you couldn't figure out how to do it without the radius, you're just, you're, you, you're just stuck. You're just stuck, which is sad. Nobody should be stuck in a situation like that. And, but then I, I had this dilemma. I'm like, should I tell them? Should I fill them in? Or should I let them just kind of struggle through it? And I decided I'll let them struggle through it with the intent that this is a two-part series anyways. And so you may have been frustrated, sad, angry, uh, confused all of the above, uh, but I, I'll tell you, we'll put that energy to work, okay? We'll take all of those emotions and we'll put it to work and make you better physicists. Physicists. Okay, so number two, how is the rock accelerating away from the center of the circle? So this lets you know what acceleration we're talking about, right? We're talking the acceleration that is away from the center of the circle. This is a linear acceleration, right? That's why when you let the, we talked about this, when you let the dough, it starts accelerating away and we're not talking about the acceleration that's keeping it, you know, in a circle. Because that's only going to change if the velocity is changing, what you would call the angular acceleration. We won't mess with that. That gets really complicated. If you want to do a college-level physics class, you'll get all into that, you know, circular acceleration. Not yet. Unless you want that, and I can give it to you. We can do that. But how is the rock accelerating away from the center of the circle? So here's where we'll go back and we'll say, what do we have? And we have whatever we got from the previous problem. So what do we have? What is the velocity from the previous problem? 40 radians per second. 40 radians per second, good. Okay, so that's what we have. That's the only thing we're given. Tools. We know that acceleration includes the velocity, velocity squared divided by r. And then what do we want? What is the problem asking us for? Acceleration. Yeah, how is the rock accelerating away from the center? It wants this acceleration. We know the velocity. That's 40 radians per second squared. We do not know the radius. And so because I didn't give this to you, you may have looked at this and said, we have no way to solve the acceleration, which is true. You can't actually get a value for it, but you can leave it in terms of r, and that's what we're going to do. So we're going to say our acceleration is equal to 40 times 40 is 1,600 radians per second squared divided by r. Remember, radians is not a unit. It's just, it's just an amount. Okay, so we don't need to do radians squared. But 1,600 radians per second squared divided by r. And that's your acceleration. And so if you knew what your radius is, you could go and you could plug it in and you could you can solve this down. Um, but we'll just we'll leave it like that for now. <sighs> okay. Is that okay for number two? So now it gets a little weird when you start leaving your answer with some variables in it, but then if you ever find out what your radius is, you just go plug it in, you have your acceleration. 
Okay, so now number three. If the rock has a mass of 5.00 grams, what is the centripetal force? So what do we have? We have mass is equal to 5.00 grams, right? We also have our, our acceleration, sorry, which is equal to, is that what you were gonna say, Josh? Yeah, our acceleration, which is equal to 1600 radians per second squared divided by r. You see any issue in this answer? How many significant figures does this number have? One. Because we don't know that it's exactly 40. We didn't put a decimal place there. How many significant figures does this number have? Two. That's too many. We can only present our answer in one significant figure because we only had one to start with. Does that make sense? We only had one to start with. We can't give an answer more precise than what we had before. Because we already knew that this was, we rounded this up from 37 or 36 and some change, right? So we already knew that this wasn't any, you know, exactly 40 anyways. So it shouldn't make us too uncomfortable to have to round this a little bit more. Which means when we come back here, we don't know that our acceleration is 1600 radians per second squared divided by the, or the radius. We know that it's approximately 2,000 radians per second squared divided by the radius. Right? Okay. Now our tools, force is equal to mass times acceleration. Right? It's nice we have a tool that actually connects both of our givens. And then what do we want? We want that force, right? So force is equal to 5.00 grams times our acceleration, which is 2,000 radians per second squared divided by r. And then we'll go ahead and just multiply this through. Now, how many significant figures does this number have? No, this one actually has three. So remember, whenever you put a decimal place in a number, you're saying something very specific. You're saying something very specific and you're giving something that's more precise. So like if you just had five there, that could be anything from 4.5 up to almost 5.5. But now when you're given this, that what's gonna round to 5.00 is only five or 4.995 up to 5.004. A much more precise number. Okay, so this one has three significant figures, but how many significant figures does this have? One. So how many significant figures should our answer have? Just one. Okay, so our force is equal to five times 2,000, which is 10,000, right? Five times 2,000 is 10,000 radians, grams per second squared divided by R. And again, we just, we can't get rid of that R. It just keeps sticking with us. It keeps coming along. Right? It's like that, um, never mind. I was going to say it's like that younger brother you just can't shake. But, there, you know, there's a whole family. But I said it anyways, right? It's just, you know, maybe you are that younger brother. You know? I love my younger brother. You know, we're really close in age, and so there was a lot of conflict growing up. But now that we're adults, there's only conflict if we spend more than a couple of days together, and it's good. All right, so does this make sense? I know our units are weird. Today we're going to reconcile all that. We're going to figure out this whole unit issue so that our force starts being what we expect force to be, and that's Newton's. And then the last problem, how fast would the rock be traveling three seconds after it, it should say it left the sling. Man, three seconds after it is left the sling. That's terrible. That's terrible. And you know what's even worse? Is I didn't fix that when I put the same questions in, but then adding the radius. But I'll fix it before I send these out. Nobody even pointed that out. A lot of people said, what do we do about the radius? 
which I'm glad that you all were thinking here. It's like, how do we solve this problem without the radius? Which means you knew how to set up these problems and you knew you were missing something. That's good. Then you ought to tell me about the grammar issue. Okay. So how fast would a rock be traveling? This one's a little bit different. So what we have is our acceleration, which is 2,000 radians per second squared divided by the radius. And then we have something that we actually haven't explicitly talked about, but you've probably done before, you just may not have done it in a while. And that's the idea of what is acceleration in the first place. I know we've talked about this indirectly, but I actually haven't shown this to you. And so uh, acceleration is equal to our change in velocity divided by our change in time, or divided by time. Okay? That's what acceleration is. As an object is accelerating, its velocity is changing. I, I've told you that before. We've talked about that before. But we didn't talk specifically about what does that mean in terms of an equation. So acceleration is equal to our change in velocity divided by our time. What is this problem asking for? How fast would the rock be traveling three seconds after it left the sling? Remember, at the exact moment it leaves the sling, it's going to be traveling basically at whatever the velocity equivalent to its angular velocity. But then it's got some kind of an acceleration. So basically what this is asking for is for our change in velocity. And we'll, do, we'll just leave it at that. This is asking for us for our change in velocity. So over that period of time, that three seconds, how does the velocity change? Okay, well, we can change this algebraically. If we want to solve for this, how do we get rid of something being divided away from it? Yeah, we multiply. So we'll multiply time to this side, and then it'll cancel out. But if you multiply time to that side, you've got to multiply time to this side as well. And that was another thing that was given to us. We know that time is equal to three seconds. It actually gives us 3.00 seconds. Right? So our change in velocity is equal to Yeah, we'll just leave it right now as that. We'll deal with that later. Change in velocity is equal to uh, our acceleration, which is two thousand radians per second squared divided by r, our acceleration times our time, right? Times 3.00 seconds. Okay. Malachi, can you see that? The 3.00 seconds or is the 3.00 seconds? It is Malachi, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so now we can multiply this through. This second is going to cancel out one of these. Remember, these seconds squared are being divided away from radians, right? So when you divide something away and then you also multiply, it cancels out. So that seconds will cancel out one of those. And then we'll do 3.00 times 2,000. How many significant figures is here? Four. Or are here? One. So how many significant figures should I answer? That? Also one. So 2,000 times three is 6,000. We canceled off one of these seconds, so we've got radians per second divided by r. Okay? That's the change in velocity that's going to happen over those three seconds. Because as that object accelerates, it's going to change the velocity. Remember we talked about that? How fast is this marker traveling right now? zero meters per second. And as it drops, it accelerates until, again, it gets to zero meters per second and it hits the ground. So as it accelerates, it's going to change the velocity. This is the change in velocity. 
So then if we wanted to figure out how fast it was going, we would just add this to whatever the initial velocity was. We can't really do that with the way we're representing velocity yet. Okay? But now we're going to start to make these connections between angular velocity and linear velocity. Okay? Are there any questions on these four homework problems? Because again, we're going to come right back to these four homework problems, but deal with them in terms of meaningful, you know, usable units. Okay. So our, our first framing question and our only framing question for today. Basically, how do we reconcile this uh, into something that makes sense? So how can we put the angular velocity into a linear velocity? How can we put the angular velocity into a linear velocity? All right. So remember, and this is, again, something we've mentioned indirectly, but it kind of makes sense. You can take a circle and you can open it up, right? Think about like a string that's tied into a circle. You could untie it and then stretch it out. Yes? Or even if you want to think about like a wedding ring. You could, maybe to your spouse's disappointment, you could open this up and you could stretch it out into a line. Right? You, you could do it with your watch. Right? You could open it up a circle and, and you can make it into a line. So an illustration helps to make this a little bit clearer. So if you want to build a fence around a, um, uh, around like a, a circular space, um, what you do is you basically treat it as though you're building a fence around a linear space. When you're trying to figure out how much material it's going to take to fence this space. Right, so if you wanted to build a fence, you know, that's going to be a straight line in between, say, your yard and your neighbor's yard. When, when my wife and I moved to Ohio, apparently they don't put up fences around their yards in Ohio. I don't know why, they just, they don't do it. It's not because it's really windy, it's much windier here. Maybe it's just like they like people walking in and out of their yard all the time. So we'd have, we'd have a bus stop right behind our house, and a bunch of kids would get off on the bus stop there and then walk through our yard to get to the street and then walk home, which didn't really bother me. But when I was at work, sometimes it would spook my wife where she'd look up and right outside the door are like five teenagers walking you know, 10 feet away from our back door as they just kind of walk through our yard. So she was always like, man, we should put up a fence, but then we realized fences are really expensive. You know, so we never put up a fence. But anyways, so if you want to build a fence that's a line, I mean, you basically could then take that line and wrap it around and make a circular enclosure. And so the way this actually connects is the distance around the edge of a circle, it's, it's called the circle's circumference. And this is essentially the distance around the edge of the circle. The distance around the edge of the circle. And here's how you calculate it. The circumference is equal to pi times the diameter. The circumference is equal to pi times the diameter. Or what's another way we can represent the circumference of a circle? Yeah. Pi r times 2. Yeah, pi r times 2, which that one's really interesting. Because we can also say that their circumference is equal to 2 pi, which where have we seen 2 pi already in our class? Just this class. What is 2 pi? Yeah, it's the number of radians in a complete circle, right? So we could also say that circumference is equal to 2 pi, the number of radians in an entire circle, times the radius of the circle. Okay? It's another way we can represent the circumference. And now this is, this is interesting. This kind of makes sense, right? There's two pi radians in an entire circle. And then if you multiply the radius of that circle, you get your circumference. And that is the distance around the edge of the circle. The linear distance. If you were to take that and stretch it out, you can make it into a linear distance. 
So then what this means is we have what you would call a linear equivalent of the angular velocity. I know that sounds really complicated, but it's basically just saying if you took that, that velocity around a circle and you wanted to then take it, okay, well, what if it were traveling in a straight line? You do that using the circumference. And you do it basically this way. The velocity is now equal to our radians per second, which we dealt with last week, right? Our velocity, our angular velocity is equal to the number of radians per second. Do you agree? And then you just multiply that by the radius of the circle, and now you have your linear velocity. So velocity is equal to radians per second times the radius of the circle. And so what's nice is if you keep your homework from lesson four, which we just went over together, close to you, uh, you'll see that we can do something really special as you start to go through your homework five. And that's then just take whatever that angular velocity was, multiply the radius of the circle, which now I give you, and actually get a linear velocity. But let's look at some of our examples from last week. You guys okay if I move to the next slide? Micah, you all right? Yeah. Okay. All right, so how is water in a bucket accelerating away from the center of a circle with a circumference 53.6 centimeters if it takes 4.75 seconds to complete the circle? If it takes 4.75 seconds to complete the circle. All right, this one, in order to solve it like we have been, it's, it's, it's going to take us a little bit, but that's okay. All right, so what do we have? What does this problem give us? It gives us our circumference, which is equal to 53.6 centimeters, right? What else does it give us? Remember, whenever you see how long it takes to complete a circle or how many circles it does per second, it also gives you what? Yeah, our angular velocity, right? So our angular velocity is 2 pi radians. How do we know it's 2 pi radians? It says it takes 4.75 seconds to complete a circle. How many radians is a circle? 2 pi radians, right? So our velocity is 2 pi radians divided by what? Four point seven five seconds. Do you agree? So a complete circle is two pi radians. It takes four point seven five seconds to complete the circle. So our velocity is two pi radians divided by four point seven five seconds. Okay. Now tools. Acceleration is equal to v squared divided by r. Circumference is equal to two pi times the radius. Right? Those are some tools that we have. What does this problem actually want? It wants the acceleration, right? How is that bucket accelerating away from the center? So it wants linear acceleration. Okay? So it wants linear acceleration. How is it accelerating away from the circle? So it wants this acceleration, the one we've been dealing with. When we did this problem last week, we left our velocity basically like this, okay? But the whole point of this week is to actually take this and make the units cleaner, right? And so we want acceleration, but in order to do that, we're gonna need to get our linear velocity, okay? We're gonna need to figure out our linear velocity before we can figure out our acceleration. And so this is another way, another tool that we have says linear velocity is equal to what? 
How do we calculate our linear velocity? According to what we just saw in the previous slide. Radians per second times the radius. Do you agree? Okay. Radians per second times the radius. So we'll go ahead and deal with it this way. So linear velocity is equal to radians per second times the radius. We don't know the radius, right? Which means we're going to need to find the radius using this tool. So we want acceleration, but in order to get acceleration, we need to get linear velocity. We want linear velocity, but in order to get linear velocity, we need radius. It's a multi-step problem, but it's okay. Again, I told you these problems are harder to set up, but it's less complex algebraically. So if you wanted to solve this for radius, how would you do it? How would you do it? Right now we have 2 pi being multiplied to the radius. If you wanted to get 2 pi away, what do we do? Divide it away. So we'll divide both sides by 2 pi. So these cancel. And so our radius is equal to our circumference which is 53.6 centimeters divided by 2 pi. Do you agree with that? No? Yes? No? Yes? Okay, we'll roll with that. I don't see anybody outright disagreeing, uh, so we'll, we'll roll with it. So 53.6 centimeters divided by pi. How many significant figures is here? Or how many significant figures are here? Sorry, I keep giving you bad grammar, I apologize. How many significant figures? Three. This has an infinite number of significant figures, right? Pi has an infinite number of places after the decimal. So how many significant figures should our answer have? Three. We get 17.1 centimeters. Okay, 2 pi is just a number, so our units were centimeters here, they remain centimeters. Now we have our radius, okay? So since we have our radius, we can find our linear velocity, right? Linear velocity is equal to radians per second times our radius. We already have radians per second here, right? This is radians per second. Okay, so our linear velocity is equal to 2 pi radians divided by 4.75 seconds times our radius, which is what? 17.1. Okay, so 17.1 times 2 pi radians. divided by 4.75 seconds. And we get that our linear velocity is equal to, how many significant figures does this have? Three. How many significant figures does this have? Three. How many significant figures does this have? An infinite number of significant figures. So how many significant figures should our answer have? Three, okay? And our answer is 22.6 Centimeters, remember radians, these are not units. We just used it to give us a count. But now once we have a measurement of distance, we can forget about the radians. Okay, because radians, it's just a number. It's just a count, like pi. It's just a count. So now we have 22.6 centimeters per second. Because the second is on the bottom, it stays on the bottom. So our velocity, our linear equivalent of our... Angular velocity is 22.6 centimeters per second. You guys okay with that? Are we done? No, remember we wanted the acceleration, but in order to get that, we needed our linear velocity. And in order to get our linear velocity, we needed our radius. This one was a more complex problem than what you'll tend to have, but I wanted to give you this one as the first of our practice problems that we do together. 
The rest should be simpler setup wise. Okay, so if you have questions, it's fine. Just, you can work these out. Okay, so acceleration is equal to velocity squared. What's our velocity? Right, we just found it. 22.6 centimeters per second. So we square this, divided it, divided by our radius. What's our radius? 17.1 centimeters. So unit-wise, this is going to be centimeters squared, right? Per second squared, right? Because if we square this number, we also need to square our units. So this is going to end up moving in. We're going to get centimeters squared, second squared. This centimeter is going to cancel with one of those. And so our units will be left in what? Centimeters per second squared which is good because that's what acceleration should be in, a distance divided by the second squared. So finally we get what we want, our acceleration is equal to, we should have three significant figures, three here, three here, our answer should have three, and it's 29.9 .9 centimeters per second squared. That's how the object, the bucket of water, or the water in the bucket is accelerating away from the circle with an acceleration of 29.9 .9 centimeters per second squared. Now our units are actually normal, right? Last week when we did this problem, we had something that was really messy and weird and awkward, but now our units are normal, but it took us having to think through what is the linear equivalent. Is this all right? The rest of them are gonna be simpler because they're not gonna require so much work to find the radius. Radius is going to be given. In your homework problems, the radius is going to be given. This one was just complex because it gave us circumference instead of radius. Okay, so let's do another one. Okay, so if a gear has a radius of 0 0.156 meters, and spins at 2,700 revolutions per minute, what is the velocity of a point on the outside of the gear? Okay, so what do we have? This gives us our radius, and what is the radius equal to? 0 0.156 meters. Right? Then also, whenever a problem gives you the amount of time it takes to complete a circle, or how many circles you complete every second, it also gives you your velocity. And what's our velocity of this gear? Twenty-seven hundred times two pi radians. Divided by seconds. Why is that? Why is that our velocity? Yeah. Yeah, it gives us that if every second it completes 2,700 full circles. It's a really quick uh, turning gear. But in every second it completes 2,700 complete circles. Every complete circle is 2 pi radians, right? So tools, we can assume that this problem wants us to give it the linear velocity because that's what this week is all about, right? Finding a linear velocity equivalent of the angular velocity. So linear velocity is equal to radians per second times the radius, right? When you have your angular velocity in radians per second, you multiply your radius, it'll give you your linear equivalent. And again, we can assume that this problem wants linear velocity. So 
our linear velocity is equal to radians per second. Well, we already have that, right? We just need to clean it up a little bit. Yeah, Jeff. Oh, look at that. Look at you catching that. Thank you. How many seconds are in a minute? 60 seconds. Thank you, thank you. That makes a big difference. That makes a big difference. So every 60 seconds, this gear completes 2,700 times 2 pi radians. Thank you for catching that. Joshua, that makes a big difference. Can I call you Joshua, not Joshua? Okay. Um, all right, so now our linear velocity is equal to radians per second, so we need to clean this up and then multiply the radius, okay? But we can just write this in, 2,700 times 2 pi radians divided by 60 seconds and then multiplied by our radius, which is what? Zero. 0.156 meters. Okay, and so now let's clean this up a little bit. 2700 times 2 pi divided by 60 seconds times 0.156 meters. How many significant figures are here? Two. So how many significant figures should be in our answer? This is three, this is two, this is infinite. Even this one is infinite because there are exactly 60 seconds in a minute. Right? That's what a minute is. A minute is 60 seconds. So your conversions, when you convert from like minutes to seconds, or if you ever convert from feet to inches, those are always exact. A foot is exactly 12 inches, meaning there's an infinite number of significant. So this is two significant figures, so our answer should have the same as the fewest we're given, which would be two, right? So our answer should have two significant figures, and we have 160 meters per second, yeah, meters per second. So once, once we have an actual unit for distance, we can ignore the radians, keeping in mind that radians, it's just a count, it's not an actual unit. And, and meters is a measurement of distance, right? You've got a meter stick to measure distance. And so once we actually have a measurement of distance, we can just leave the radians out. I mean, you can leave it in there if you want. If that causes you less confusion, you can have radians times meters per second. That's fine. Just keep in mind that radians, it's just a count. It's just an amount. It's not a unit. Is this okay? So we had angular velocity when we did this problem before, and that's basically this just cleaned up. 2,700 times 2 pi divided by 60 seconds. Sorry, when I write over here, Isaiah or Malachi, I'll move further over so that it's easier to see. Um, and then now we give it in meters per second, which is a more normal measurement of velocity. Any questions? We've got a couple more examples that we're going to do when we're going to start now bringing in our other concepts. So we've talked about acceleration with getting the linear equivalent of the velocity. And now we can move into force with getting the linear equivalent of the velocity. So if a person with a mass of 135 0.5 kilograms completes one circle or one fourth of a circle with radius 13.5 meters in 4.5 seconds. What force do they experience away from the center of the circle? Okay. So this problem gives us a lot of information, right? What are some of the things it gives us? It gives us mass. Good. What is the mass? 135.5 kilograms. That's a big person, like my size. Okay. Big person. A lot of mass. What else does it give us? Radius is equal to what? 13.5 meters. 
What else does it give us? It gives us time that we can use to give our angular velocity, which it also gives us, right? So it gives us our angular velocity because it tells us that the person completes one-fourth of a circle in a certain amount of time. How many radians is a full circle? Two pi. So this person completes one-fourth times two pi radians every 4.5 seconds. Okay. Is that okay? So this problem also gives us angular velocity. What tools do we have? We know that linear velocity is equal to what? What is it? What is linear velocity equal to? Radians per second times the radius. <coughs> right? We have something that includes velocity and radius. What is that tool? What tool do we have that connects velocity and radius? Yep, acceleration is equal to v squared divided by r. And what tool do we have that includes mass? This is yours. Yeah, force equals mass times acceleration. Right, Newton's second law. Force equals mass times acceleration. That's a good one. It's a really good one. Okay, those are some tools that we have. What do we want? What is the problem asking us for? Force, right? The problem wants the force. How much force is that person experiencing away from the center of the circle? So now it tells us our acceleration is away from the center of the circle. We're looking at linear acceleration, which is good because we haven't talked about angular acceleration. And we're not going to because it's beyond the realm of what we're going to do in this class. All right, so force. But in order to get force, what do we need to find first? Acceleration. And in order to get acceleration, what do we need to find first? Yeah, linear velocity. Okay? Linear velocity is equal to radians per second. So all we need to do is clean this up. Right? We'll clean this up. But we'll go ahead and put that in one-fourth times 2 pi radians divided by 4.5 seconds and then multiply that by the radius which is 13.5 meters and that should give us our linear velocity do you agree? if we clean this up 1 fourth times 2 pi radians divided by 4.5 seconds significant figures is in this? An infinite number of significant figures. How many significant figures is here in 4.5 seconds? Two. How many significant figures here? Three. How many significant figures in one-fourth? Who knows, right? What do we even do with a fraction? I have no idea what you do with a fraction in terms of significant figures. So let's use this one and present our answer in two significant figures because we're going to have to assume this is exactly one-fourth of a circle because I don't know what you would do with a fraction as far as limiting significant figures. You could make it 0 0.25, but then who's to say you couldn't make it 0 0.250, right? But yeah, if you make it 0 0.25, then you still have the two significant figures. So we'll just present our answer in two. Is that all right? And so we get linear velocity is equal to 7.4 meters per second. So seconds still on the bottom. Meters came in, we don't need radians anymore now that we have an actual measurement of distance. If you want to leave the radians in, leave them in. Okay, be my guest. I just want you to know you don't need them because they're not an actual unit. 
Now that we have velocity, can we find our acceleration? Yes, we can, because acceleration is equal to what? B squared over R. So we've got 7.4 meters per second, quantity squared, divided by our radius, which is... What's our radius? 13.5 meters. Okay, remember this squared is going to also square our units. This meter is going to cancel out one of these, and our acceleration will be left with units that are equal to meters per second squared. Why is that good? What are the units for acceleration due to gravity? It's 9.80 meters per second squared. Okay? That's beautiful. Given our acceleration in the same units that acceleration due to gravity is. And so this equals zero point, how many significant fingers here? Two, how many significant fingers here? Three, but we'll, so we'll limit it to do 0 0.55 meters per second squared. And there's our acceleration. Are we done? Almost, but not quite. Because what did the problem want? They wanted force. Look at all of this work you've done. And if you truly are tracking, like you seem you are, because you're not, like you seem you are, like it seems you are, because you're not asking questions, you're accomplishing a great deal figuring out what the force exerted on this person is. So force is equal to what? Audrey, what is force equal? Mass times acceleration. What's the mass of our person? 135.5 kilograms, right? What's the acceleration? We just solved it. 0 0.55 meters per second squared. You okay with that? Just putting in what we've already solved. And so we find that force is equal to, how many significant figures should we have? Well, this has four, this one has two. We'll do it as the one with the least. So force is equal to 74 kilograms meters per second squared. And look at these. What is a kilogram meter per second squared? A newton. So our force is equal to 74 newtons. 74 newtons. So how does this acceleration compare to that due to gravity? The acceleration due to gravity is 9.80 meters per second squared, right? Is this more or less than that? Less, a lot less, right? So this force that that person is experiencing is less than the force of gravity. So they're probably not going to fall down. Which makes sense because they only completed a quarter of a circle in a whole five seconds. Now they're not just spinning like this. You know, the circle has a radius of 13 meters. But they're probably not going to fall down. Right? Because gravity is pulling down on them more strongly than the force pushing them away from the center of the circle. But if you get to a point where this force is greater than gravity, now you get some interesting things happening. Where that person may go down. It's sad, right? Unless it's not, right? Then it might be kind of funny. But. Okay? We okay with this? And so your homework is basically the same four homework problems, except for now it actually gives you the radius, and it wants you, it wants you to work with the linear equivalent of the angular velocity. If as you're working through these, you have any questions now that we've kind of dealt with all of angular momentum, we've worked out our units, made them work, please, please, please ask. And when I send out the homework, these slides with the homework, well, one, I'll fix this. It'll say after it, after it left the sling instead of is, after it left the sling. So I'll fix that. And then when I send it out, um, I'll also post on our digital classroom some extra problems if you want to work through those. That's how I figured I would work that rather than emailing it to the people that wanted it specifically. It'll be there that way week to week. If some weeks you want some more problems, they're there for you. If other weeks you don't, they're still there for you. You just don't have to use them. Okay. All right.